Welcome to Algebra 1. This is 7-6, Exponential Functions. The essential question is, how do you graph an exponential function? Let's begin. So what is an exponential function? What does that look like? Here's the, the kind of standard form of that. y equals a times b to the x power. There's some rules for that. a can't be 0, b has to be greater than 0, and b can't be 1. And x has to be a real number. A lot of rules there. But don't get stuck on those. The key here is that x is our exponent right here. So x is in a number that's just being multiplied. It's, we're taking a number, b, doing it to the x power. That's what makes it exponential. The x is in the exponent. So some examples are y equals 2 times 3 to the x power, or y equals 2 to the x power. In that case, a is 1. Um, y equals negative 1 half to the x power. Notice this negative is on the outside, so that's kind of like negative 1 times 1 half to the x power. So it's kind of looking like that. So these are all different examples of exponential functions. What do they look like? Here's what they'll look like. Got a few different ones right here. Notice you, you'll have like a kind of a straight arrow, straight area, and then you have one direction that goes up, you know, up to infinity really fast, or one that goes down to infinity really fast. This is this is the general shape of the exponential function. So all these are exponential functions. How do you graph one of these? Well, it's kind of like graphing everything else. We have to plot some points, then plot enough points, get the general shape, and then you can draw your curve. So for example, I want to graph this function y equals 2 to the x power. I'm going to make my xy table here. And I'm going to start with 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if you, fig you have these values for x, you must plug them in to figure out your y value. So for the first one, for 0, it's 2 to the 0 power. And anything to the 0 power is 1. So y equals 1. OK, the next one, x is 1, so 2 to the 1 power. Anything to the 1 power is just that thing, so it'll be 2. Next one's 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4, so 4. And the next one's going to be 2 to the 3rd power. 2 cubed is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So I've got those points. I'm going to plot those points right now. So 0, 1 is right here. I'm going to label this 0, 1. 1, 2 is right here. I'm going to label that 1, 2. 2, 4 is going to be about right here. And then 3, 8. So 3, 8 is going to happen right here. Now you can see that the curve kind of goes up really fast now. I want to plot some points to the left, too, to see what the behavior is on the other side. So let's pick some extra points, negative 1 and negative 2. So if I plot in x equals negative 1, I get 2 to the negative 1 power. Well, what does that convert to? I'm going to write it as either a fraction here. So anything to the negative 1 power, we can convert it to be a fraction. It's going to be 1 over 2 to the positive 1 power which is just 1 half, 1 over 2. If you've got negative 2, 2 to the negative 2 power is going to be flipping out of the bottom denominator fraction, 2 to the positive 2 power. So 1 over 2 squared is going to be 1 over 4. So I'm going to plot those two points. Negative 1, 1 half is going to be about right here, halfway between 1 and 0. I'm going to label that negative 1 and 1 half. And the next one, negative 2 and 1 fourth is going to be even lower, so it's going to be closer to the 0. And I'll label that, I'll try to, negative 2 and 1 fourth. So it's hard to see, but you can see it's, it actually gets closer and closer, but it never actually hits the x-axis. So if I want to draw the graph of that, sketch, sketch the curve here, I would try to draw a perfect curve as best you can. And it gets closer, but it never touches. So I'm going to go that far. Just put arrowheads to say it keeps going on up forever and to the left forever. And that's how you graph that. You, you're going to need a few points here to get the curve right. All right? All right. I'd say probably around 3 to 5 will get you a good curve, but just do enough till you see the curve. All right, so another way we can do, I want to identify if something is an exponential function just from the table. So ignore this part. It's, this is going to be exponential function. This is y equals 2x. But let's figure out how you can identify it just from the table. So one thing you want to note is let's, let's, um, as we're going up, as we go down the table, my x values are going up one every time, plus one, plus one. Notice that every time it's going up one. Well, how are the y values changing here? Well, they're not like when we did linear functions; they were always like adding something or subtracting something. But we're not doing this here. We're actually multiplying by two. One fourth times two is one half. One half times two is one. One times two is two. Two times two is four. Four times two is going to be 8. So we're actually adding 1 on the x's, but we're multiplying on the y's. And that's what happens with exponential functions. We call this the common ratio. So the common ratio in this case is 2. OK? 
because we're always multiplying by 2. You, and y's are always going to be multiplying by the same number, that common ratio for every step. So in this case, it's 2. Notice this function that the base of our exponent is 2. So that's how you know what your common ratio is. All right, let's try some examples. Pause the video. All right, I want to graph this. y equals negative 3 to the x power. Notice the negative is outside the exponent. Um, let's, so let's pick some values for x. I'm going to go negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's do that. So x is negative 1. You're going to get y equals negative 3 to the negative 1 power, which is going to be negative 1 over 3 to the 1, so negative 1 third. For 0, it's going to be negative 3 to the 0 power, so it'll be 3 to the 0 is 1, so negative 1. For 1, it's going to be negative 3 to the 1 power, which is going to be negative 3. And for 2, it'll be negative 3 squared, which will be negative 9. And for 3, it'll be negative 3 cubed, which will be negative 27. So let's plot those points. I'll do this in pink. 1, negative, negative 1, negative 1 thirds, negative 1 here, negative 1 thirds. So let's say it's about here. And I'll label it negative 1, negative 1 third. 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1 is going to happen right here. Label that 0, negative 1. Uh, let's go with 1, negative 3. That'll happen right here. So we'll label that point and 1, negative 3. And next one's going to be 2, negative 9. So 2, negative 9 is going to be down here. And 3, negative 27, that's way off. So I'm going to just avoid doing that. And I can actually already see a shape going on here. So, so that's going to be way down below, way off my screen. I know my shape's going to kind of look like this. I'm going to try to draw my perfect curve. And it's going to go through these points. And it's going to get closer to x, but it's never going to actually cross. So I'm going to draw my shape like that, draw my arrowheads like this. And that's my graph of y equals negative 3 to the x power. All right, next one. Pause the video. Does it represent an exponential function? So if we're adding 1 on x every time, we're always adding 1, we have to be multiplying by the same thing on y every time. So 2 times what is 4? Well, that's 2 times 2, right? Then 4 times what is 6? Wait, that's not times 2 again. That doesn't work, right? So we're not actually multiplying by the same thing every time. That's going to be 4 times what's going to get to 6. 3 halves is going to get to 6. And 6 times. 4 thirds is going to get to 8. So that's not, does this represent an exponential function? No. We are adding the same thing every time. So every time I'm adding 2, I'm adding 2, I'm adding 2. That makes it a linear function, not exponential. This is linear, because you're always adding or subtracting, but it's not exponential. OK, next one. That's it.